Originally, Caesarea Philippi was called Panius, after the Greek god Pan. The site was established as a pagan worship centre after the conquest of Alexander the Great, which saw Greek culture and religion flood into the region. Pan, the god of fertility, was chosen as the local deity, a logical choice when you consider that most people were farmers and dependent on the fertility of the land for their well-being. Many locals thought that he was responsible for the springs that bubbled up out of the bedrock and flowed into the upper reaches of the Jordan River. They believed the half-man and half-goat god sent water up from the underworld where he dwelt. The focus of local worship was centred on the grotto, a natural cave in the bedrock. Some scholars have suggested that ancient worshippers believed this to be the gates of Hades, the entrance to the underworld. Locals built a large temple in front of the grotto and sacrificed pigs to Pan, throwing the dead carcasses into the cave. The 60 metre high bedrock at Panius was nicknamed the Rock of the Gods. Idols and statues of gods and goddesses were placed into these small openings cut into the rock. The Romans eventually conquered this area and Caesar Augustus gave the region to Herod the Great who built a temple in honour of his beneficiary. When Herod died, the region was passed on to his son, Herod Philip. Philip renamed Panius Caesarea Philippi after the Roman Emperor Caesar Augustus and himself. He then developed the site into his capital city. The pagan practices of the city and a large economy attracted many Gentiles who settled there. During the later stages of Jesus' ministry, opposition intensified against him, so he headed north towards Caesarea Philippi, spending time with his disciples before the Passover in Jerusalem. When he arrives in the area, Jesus asks his disciples, Who do people say that I am? They respond with some common answers that the public held. But Jesus then personalises his question and asks them, Who do you say I am? Simon Peter speaks up and says, You are the Christ. In Matthew's account of the story, Jesus praises Peter's answer. He responds, I tell you that you are Peter, the rock, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. Some religious scholars today believe that Jesus said this while looking over Caesarea Philippi and pointing to the 60 metre high rock face. He was possibly implying that upon this rock, this bedrock of the Gentile world, he will build his church, foreshadowing that the Jewish people will reject the gospel and it will go out into the Gentile world. Furthermore, some scholars also believe that Jesus is also alluding to the gates of Hades, the grotto itself, saying that the gates of evil and pagan gods will not stand in the way of the church. Other scholars want to suggest that Peter himself is the rock, as that's the meaning of his name. These scholars presume that upon Peter's ministry, the church will be established. And this is partly true. The early church was established through the ministry of Peter, as well as John, Paul, Barnabas and others. However, another line of thinking suggests that the key to Jesus' words isn't so much where he is, nor so much who he's speaking with, but rather the key is Peter's statement that Jesus is the Christ. And it is upon this foundation, this rock of knowledge, that the church will be founded. 
In many respects, this makes more sense. The foundation of the church is not a people group, nor a particular place. The foundation of the church is the knowledge that Jesus is the Christ, God's promised prophet, priest and king. And he is the foundation upon which the church stands.